Hi, my name is Adna Tokmich and I'm a fourth year pharmacy student at Drake University. Today I'll be talking about Loquenza dual and triple pack therapies, which were recently FDA approved on May 3rd, 2022 for the treatment of H. pylori in adults. This new treatment can see a new class of acid suppressants known as potassium competitive acid blockers. It's important to note that this presentation represents opinions of myself based on the references at the end of this presentation. I wanted to go over a bit of background information about the disease state, the current treatment regimens, and the reason for this new therapy. H. pylori is a bacteria that can cause an infection in the stomach or duodenum and can lead to serious complications such as peptic ulcer disease, gastritis, and non-cardiac gastric cancer. Around 115 million people are infected with H. pylori annually in the United States. An acid suppression therapy is the backbone for H. pylori treatment regimens in order to enhance the effectiveness of antibiotics. The most common treatment regimen is a proton pump inhibitor or PPI-based clarithromycin therapy, which includes a PPI and amoxicillin or metronidazole and clarithromycin. However, a fourth of patients feel PPI-based clarithromycin therapy and eradication rates have dropped less than 80% over the last few decades due to antibiotic resistance, inadequate acid suppression, and complex treatment regimens, which has further led to treatment failures and other complications. Wilquenza or vonopressin is thought to be more potent acid suppressant, which may help improve eradication rates of these current regimens. Here I wanted to look at the differences and similarities between the mechanism of action of lansoprazole and monoprazin. Lansoprazole decreases gastric acid secretion in parietal cells through the inhibition of the hydrogen potassium ATP's enzyme system, blocking the final step in gastric acid production. However, it requires an acidic environment in order for activation. Monoprazin also suppresses gastric acid secretion in parietal cells through the inhibition of the hydrogen potassium ATP's enzyme system via a competitive interaction with the potassium site on the enzyme. It, however, doesn't require an acidic environment for activation and may subtly concentrate in both the resting and simulated states, which allows it to have a faster onset of action. Approval for monoprazin was based on safety and efficacy data from the Phase 3 Falcon HV trial that included 1,406 randomized patients. These treatment-naive adults with H. pylori were randomized to either receive vonopressin dual therapy, vonopressin triple therapy, or lansoprazole triple therapy, which included lansoprazole, moxicillin, and clothromycin. Looking at the primary outcomes, both vonopressin treatment regimens demonstrated non-inferiority to lansoprazole triple therapy in patients without a clothromycin or moxicillin resistant infection. Looking at the secondary outcome, both treatment regimens demonstrated superiority to lansoprazole triple therapy among all patients, including those with clarithromycin-resistant strains. Lastly, adverse events were comparable between the vonoprazin and lansoprazole regimens. Now I will go more into the dosage forms, dosing, adverse events, and contraindications of the triple and dual pack therapies. So looking at the dosage forms and strengths, the triple pack contains vonoprazin 20 mg, amoxicillin 500 mg, and clarithromycin 500 mg. The dual pack contains vonoprazin 20 mg and amoxicillin 500 mg. The dosage and administration for the triple pack is vonoprazin 20 mg, amoxicillin 1000 mg, and clarithromycin 500 mg twice daily for 14 days. The dosage and administration for the dual pack is vonoprazin 20 mg twice daily and amoxicillin 1000 mg three times daily for 14 days. Either of these can be taken with or without food. The triple pack adverse reactions that occurred in greater than or equal to 2% of patients equals dyskusia or altered or impaired sense of taste, diarrhea, vulvovaginal candinitis, headache, abdominal pain, and hypertension. The dual pack adverse reactions that occurred in greater than or equal to 2% of patients include nasopharyngitis, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vulvovaginal candinitis. The dual pack therapy lacks some of the adverse effects associated with the triple pack therapy, such as dyskusia, headache, and hypertension. There are special populations to consider when wanting to initiate triple and dual therapy packs. First, Elderly are at an increased risk of developing TDP due to the clothromycin component in these regimens. In a steady state study, healthy elderly subjects given 500 mg of clothromycin every 12 hours had maximum serum concentrations and increased AUCs compared to those in healthy young adults. This finding indicates that they may be more susceptible to the development of TDP. Additionally, vonoprazin should be avoided in severe renal impairment and moderate to severe hepatic impairment because those with severe renal and hepatic impairment were shown to have greater systemic exposure of vonoprazin. There are several warnings and precautions that should be considered when starting vonoprazin. Severe cutaneous adverse reactions such as SJS and 10 have been reported with components of both packs. DRESS has also been reported with amoxicillin and clarithromycin. 
Additionally, antibacterial agents alter the normal flora of the colon, leading to an overgrowth of C. diff and therefore C. diff-associated diarrhea. There are also several warnings and precautions associated with the clothromycin component of the PAX, including QT prolongation, hepatotoxicity, embryofetal toxicity, and myasthenia gravis. Therefore, these PACs should be avoided in patients with known QT prolongation or those receiving QT prolong drugs, and they should also be avoided in those with increased liver enzymes, hepatocellular and or cholecystic hepatitis, with or without jaundice. They're also not recommended for use in pregnant women based on findings from animal and human observational studies um, that showed that there is an increased risk of miscarriage and incidence of fetal malformations. Lastly, an exacerbation of symptoms and new onset of myasthenia syndrome has also been reported. There are various contraindications to be aware of when prescribing vonoprazin. Vonoprazin reduces intragastric acidity, which may alter the absorption of antiretroviral drugs, leading to changes in its safety and efficacy. There are also various contraindications due to the chlorothromycin component of these packs. These include pomidazide, cholesterol-lowering medications such as lomidipine, lovastatin, and simvastatin, ergot alkaloids including ergotamine and dihydrogotamine, colchicine, and those with a history of cholestatic jaundice or hepatic dysfunction with previous use of clothromycin. Lastly, I would like to discuss future applications of vonoprazin in therapy. On May 25, 2022, the FDA accepted to review a new drug application for vonoprazin as a treatment for erosive esophagitis and non-erosive gastroesophageal reflux disease. This decision was supported by the positive data from the Phase 3 Falcon EE trial with 1,027 randomized patients with EE in the U.S. and Europe. The study compared vonoprazin to lansoprazole during the healing and maintenance phase of EE. The study met its primary and key secondary superiority endpoints. The application standard review target date is set for January 11, 2023. This is a list of references used to create this presentation. Thank you all for listening.